My mom loves secondhand stores. Anybody else love shopping at secondhand? Goodwill, consignment, you name it. You're kind of uh, gurus at shopping, right? Well, that's kind of the way our Christmas goes. She likes, I'm not saying she likes cheap, by the way. She likes the oddities. She likes the little surprises, the things that you just don't quite know what they are. Do you guys ever open packages and you open them and then you look at what that thing is and you kind of hold it this way and then you hold it this way and you flip it upside down and you look at every direction and you still go, what is this? Have you, did you have any of those packages at Christmas? In general, we're going to have one package at least that's like that every year. What in the world is this? And I guess it's a good thing. She likes the oddities. She still likes me just the way I am, and that's a good thing. But we never know what we're going to get, and we never know what's going to bring the most laughs. I mean, in general, you're going to come up with one gift. I mean, maybe at your house, you open gifts, and then somebody opens a gift, and you know that that's going to get all of the attention the rest of the day. Am I right? Sometimes you open a gift, and you never know if somebody's going to like it or not. Well, for me, part of the joy is noticing which one, which one gift stands out above all the rest. And it's always a surprise for us because we start out with oddities to begin with. This year, the gift that stood out to us was a little game called Yikers. Anybody ever heard of the game called Yikers? It was definitely not on the top 10 purchase list. This year, and probably wasn't in the top 1,000 in previous years, it was just one of these oddities that my mom picked up at a secondhand store, a game of magnets. I mean, you have a board and, and the board changes, but then you have to put magnets on and make sure that they don't bump into each other or make sure that they don't knock somebody else off or over. It gave us a lot of laughs. Because you never knew what was going to happen. You place one magnet on and it was shoving all the pieces around or pulling other pieces into it, just black little pieces, and you didn't know which side was which, so you didn't know what, whether it was going to pull or push. You didn't know what to expect. I think sometimes, sometimes Christmas can be like this. The gift idea, I mean. You never know what's going to get the attention or when that attention is going to fade. The truth is with this game, we could play it a few more times this year. We could set it aside and be on the shelf and then come next year, we'll pull it out and say, oh, I kind of forgot that we had this game sitting up on the shelf. Do you guys ever do that with Christmas presents? You forget them for a whole year and you look up there and go, oh yeah, I remember. They just kind of get forgotten. Um, I wonder... Could that have felt like that was happening with Jesus? I mean, one baby isn't really that much more exciting than another baby. Well, unless it's it's your baby, and then that makes a difference. Or if it's a grandchild, then it makes a difference because that's the most important thing in the world. But think about baby Jesus. I mean, he's just another baby in a stinky rag, stuffed in the livestock's food. I mean, yeah, there was some excitement there that night. There was some excitement when the shepherds came and when the angels sang to them and all the proclamation that was taking place. But then, you know, the next day happens, and that's what happens after Christmas. The next day happens, and all of the shepherds went back to work, didn't they? We go back to work. We get back to reality. The angels weren't there singing any longer, and Mary and Joseph had to get on with life. I sometimes wonder if Mary and Joseph looked back and just thought, was it all a dream? I mean, I, I know I've got this little baby. I, I know that I've got this child in my arms, but, but were the angels a dream? I mean, were those shepherds, was that real? Maybe, maybe why, what makes my baby any more special than another? I can imagine 40 days, in fact, after all of this had happened, nothing else special or miraculous happens, and you're just holding a baby that's, I mean, you still got to take care of this baby. Jesus' diapers needed changed. If you get to think, well, is any more special? Was it just a dream? Truth is, we know how it unwraps. So we look back and we think, well, that's silly. We, should, we know better. 
Well, yeah, because we have the scripture, because we have the good news. We have all of the stories of the disciples and of Luke that tells us of the birth and the announcement and proclamation. Mary and Joseph didn't have that. They just had a child in their arms. A little bundle of promise, yes, but just a child. I can imagine when they go to the temple that they're just expecting the routine. They, they're bringing him for this sacrifice. By the way, they bring a poor person's sacrifice. They're not able to bring a, a full offering, and so they just provide the two turtle doves. They're poor people wearing poor clothing, can, and I can just imagine them showing up in the presence of Simeon and thinking, don't look down on us too much. We don't have much to offer and humbly giving him the baby Jesus and thinking, not expecting anything, just thinking we're just going to barely make it by in life and we're just hoping that this sacrifice is worthy enough. And Simeon takes this child. Simeon takes this child that, that, I mean, they've heard good news, but 40 days later, they're probably beginning to wonder, was it a dream? And Simeon takes this child and proclaims, that he has now seen the Lord's Messiah, that he has held in his arms. And think about this for a moment. Think about it. The God who created the universe, the God who created each one of us, and here is Simeon, a holy and righteous man in the temple who has been waiting for the Messiah, and all of a sudden he realizes this God who has been holding him all of his life is now in his arms. And he says, I have seen the fulfillment of the good news. I am at peace and I can die a peaceful man. That was all he needed, was to hold in his arms, for his life to be complete, was to hold the baby Jesus, the king of creation, in his hands. I think maybe, maybe that's what we need our own lives to be able to say that we have held, we, we claim Christ as our own. And we didn't go on to read it in the scripture text today, but shortly after that, of course, Anna shows up, a prophetess there, and she begins to proclaim the same thing. She begins to shout out loud and tell everybody that she can that this is the Messiah. Not, it wasn't this royal family that came in. It wasn't these people adorning rich clothes. It was this poor family who barely had enough for the offering. And this child, she began saying, this is the one that will bring redemption for all people. I sometimes wonder if this Christmas story is is more like our Christmas gifts than we realize. <laughs> Those big expensive gifts that, that we put so much time and money into and, and they, get, they get played with, sure, or they get used, but then they get put on the shelf and forgotten. But something, something that surprises us, something that we didn't expect, something that is of meager first assessment becomes so valuable, so precious to us. I began to think about this game that we got this year, this Yikers game, and thinking, boy, how silly it is. But then I thought a little bit more about what was actually taking place on this board. You see, when Jesus came into the world, he changed the, the lives of everyone. Everyone that he met, even from being an infant being held in Simeon's hands. He changed his life. He changed Anna's life. Everyone that he came in contact or came near, he changed their life. And I began looking at this game and, and you could have the board set up and you could have pieces all over, all kinds of little black kind of square marbles, whatever you want to call them, sitting around the board and then you want to go place a piece on the board without making them clink together or without making them tip over. So you got to do it very carefully. But as soon as you come anywhere near that board, all of a sudden, all the other pieces sitting on the board started reacting. And they started shifting and changing directions, their polarization pointing or pushing away, some of them actually being tipped over, hopefully not going off the edge. 
But every single piece on that board would be affected by the placement of this one piece. I got to thinking, isn't this a lot like Jesus? In the world that, that Jesus would affect anyone and everyone that is anywhere near that comes into the presence of the king. But not only that, what about our own lives? In our own lives, we have priorities, don't we? We have things that take time, things that take resources, things that we pour ourselves into. But I've found, I don't know about you, but I have found when Jesus comes into a place in your life that all of a sudden our priorities shift. Our focuses, our time, our energy, our resources begin to shift and refocus because all of a sudden Jesus is in the center of that and it's redirecting everything. By the way, I also found the easiest way to, to play the game is to cheat. Let's not call it cheating, but let's just call it playing it safe. Now, I, I know a few people who play their faith safe. Because here's what you can do. You can take that piece and instead of sitting it bravely, standing up, because that's when it affects most things, right in the center of the board, instead of that, you kind of tip it over sideways and you kind of just put it right in on the edge. Just barely there. I mean, it's not quite tipping off of the edge, but it's, it's there. But it has the least effect on all of the other pieces around it. It's in, on the board, but it's not really moving anything. And I began to think, you know, how many of us in our Christian lives, that's what we want to do. We want to have Jesus in our life. We want to play that piece and, and know that we're, we're including Christ, but we don't necessarily want to put him in the center or stand him upright because he's going to affect things. He's going to make pieces come clinging together. He's going to push pieces over and say, that doesn't belong here. He's going to rearrange things, and we're not comfortable with that. This little baby Jesus will make a powerful impact and transform your life in 2018 if you let him. Uh. Or you can just stick him on, in on the edge if that feels safe. Jesus Christ, the King of kings, the Lord of lords, the Alpha, the Omega, beginning and the end. This little baby Jesus, even when held in the hands of Simeon, was proclaimed as the one who would transform the world. Maybe we're not comfortable holding Jesus this close. But my challenge to you in 2018 is to play Jesus right in the center. And say, Jesus, I'm giving you the rest of this, all of my life. My priorities, my time, my resources, my energy. God, I'm giving you my voice. I'm giving you my actions. My behavior, my words, my attitudes, my heart, my mind, my, my soul. I challenge you in 2018 to think about what it is like to hold the king of the universe in the center of your life. And when you do that, you will see everything around you change.